Hi, this is Greg with Cornhole Central, and I want to give you a quick walkthrough of how easy it is to put together our DIY cornhole kit. So we're going to assume that you have a top, either one that you've bought through us or one that you've made, simple 2x4 piece of plywood, zip a 6 inch hole in it, I can do another video about the different ways you can do that later, either a router with a template or a hole saw. But for now we're just going to focus on, you've got a deck built and you want to attach one of our kits. So you've got two rails, and these are all labeled kind of show you the details. This is the right side and as you can see it's got grooves here for the cross pieces. It's got a hole pre-drilled for the leg bolt and it's got these pocket screws, pocket holes, that you're going to use to screw it down to the board. You also use those pocket holes to attach the pieces which is what we're going to do first. So this is one of the cross pieces. As you see it's got two pocket holes that will drill it down into the underbelly of the board and then two pocket holes at each end which is what's going to attach it to the side rails. So we're going to start like so, we're going to put in place our side piece and two end pieces and you can see this one is labeled left and it's fairly intuitive, holes go by the hole because that's where your legs are going to be. So we're going to put this into place and since we're going to be drilling the screws into those, the screws are going to want to push the rails away from the cross piece so we're going to get some kind of a clamp. It doesn't have to be a lot of pressure, it's basically just holding the thing from separating because as soon as the pocket screws take hold, and you want to make sure you push both pieces down against the bottom of the deck because that's the position you're going to want them in at the end of the day. Um, then you're going to take the inch and a quarter Craig screws that come with the kit, and these are a little bit special. One thing is they've got a square head, so you're going to need a square bit depending on the size of Craig's, you know, you may have this already, or if you buy Craig's screws, you can get it. It's a really handy kind of screw. The key is that it's flat on the back, so when it zips into the pocket hole, it stops exactly when it's supposed to. If you've got a flared head, it's going to want to dig through the wood, which means it's going to pop out on the other side. No bueno. So, I'm going to start with our pocket screw. I recommend using a drill driver if you have one. You'll hear it, uh, it's going to be a little loud. It kind of tat 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 the screws into the hole versus a regular drill. So you just pop it into the hole. Not the most pleasant sound in the world, but it gets the job done a lot better than a drill if you happen to have one. So it's actually vibrating the screw into the hole. So we'll hit the other one. Like I said, there's two on each side. And it doesn't put any torque on your hand like a drill either. It's just, it's, it does all the work for you. So it just zips it right in. If you don't have one, use this as your excuse to get one because it's a good tool. Have. I'll even do this one from the other side here. Make sure everything's pushed down into place. Zip that there. And one thing I'm not doing here is gluing it. Um, honestly, either the glue or the screws do the job. In fact, the glue does the job so well you technically don't need the screws long term. But in any case, um, if you really want to lock everything down, pop, drop some wood glue, just run a bead along the underside of the frame. It can be real thin, it's going to do the work, and then when it dries, that's a life, lifetime bond for you. So anyway, that's one end. Now we'll pop down to this end. And these pieces, you can see the, the end pieces are just slightly less than the height of the frame rail so that you get a nice little reveal. Then there's also a couple pieces that are thinner than that. So here's the end piece. And you can tell it's got the, the two there and then the end of the drill. And then the two cross pieces are actually thinner by a little bit. These are the cross pieces that are going under the board to give it the rigidity and prevent the bounce and the noise and all that kind of stuff. And there's only one screw there and one on each side just because it's a smaller piece of wood. But no matter, let's get the uh, the, end, the other end piece in. So, like I said, there's these nice grooves in there so you don't have to measure anything. You just pop it into place. This clamp down here has done its job because these are, these are now screwed into place. So we'll come down here. We will clamp that the same way push everything down against the surface of the deck. Confident that that is down. So, rinse and repeat. Pop some screws in there.
So that's where you can really see the power of the drill doing all the work. I'm not needing to put any torque, any pressure, because I'm not even at a good angle here. So that's locked into place. So now we have the square of the frame, lickety split. Now we're going to take the cross pieces, We've got two of those. There's slots for those two, so they go exactly where you want them. Got two of those. This is fairly intuitive. The hole only goes one way, so it's going to go there. I like to put the holes towards the middle. And those, once again. Push everything down to make sure you're going to get good contact with the bottom of the board. That into place. because the, these head, the side pieces are already held in place by the end pieces, so they're not going to want to walk away nearly as much as the end pieces when you're putting your first, uh, first side rails in. So, voila. And that's it. We built the frame. I can't see the timestamp on the video. Pretty quick, though. Um, and I'm walking through it at about the normal pace I think you would work. I'm not, not rushing and not taking my time um, overly. So next step, we've got these legs. Two legs, once again, labeled right and left, that are going to go with the, the sides as labeled. Once again, fairly intuitive to put together because you can see the, the angle of the legs. You're going to want it facing that way, flat with the board. So, we'll take the hardware. Once again, we, you know, we include all the hardware with the kit, so you're not going to have to go out and buy anything. The one thing you might need is a square bit for the, uh, for the Craig screws, but like I said earlier, it's a good, good investment anyway. So... Zip the, I should show a video of that, but anyway, so basically, you know, you lay the leg in place, you put the screw through from the outside, put one washer on the end of the screw, and you take the wing nut and put that on there, tighten her up, and if you tighten the wing nut, you can actually just kind of, it'll, it'll pull the carriage bolt in from the outside, so as you can see, carriage bolts have a little square piece on the outside so you want to pull that into the wood and just finger tightening the wing nut is actually enough to do that um, so then you get a nice tight seal and the nut looks nice and finished from the outside you know wrench you know give it a little bit of ah, give it a little bit of muscle and that'll go in there do that from both sides and that'll automatically put the legs exactly where you want them because we've already you know this is all this is all cut with a cnc router so it's computer controlled, so every piece is going to be precisely the size, shape, relationship, everything that you need. Although I just remembered, I don't want to do that yet because there's some pocket holes behind the legs. My bad. Obviously, I didn't plan this out completely, but let's get to back that step where you're going to actually attach the board to the bottom of the deck. Now, this is a simple matter of measuring, squaring it off, making sure you got equal on all sides. Fairly straightforward. I already wanted to have one of these handy. I'm going to zip in one of my end screws here. So, that's it. so now I got that one screw placed, so it's all good. I can double check my measurements. Obviously, you're going to do this a little more carefully. You're going to get your tape measure out and make sure it's all centered. But I like to do one corner and then the other just to make sure it's really locked into place. Well, I'm just eyeballing it here, but obviously for your own set, uh, you know, a good yard eyeballing. So now we're locked into place. I'll actually finish off these screws here so I can get to the legs so you don't have to watch me zip all, all the screws in. So now with these two screws in, these two are that way. We'll zip these end ones in just for a heck of it. As you can see, it's lickety split. And all the way locked down. Back to the step I did before. So the legs inside the frame, pop the carriage bolt through both the frame and the leg with it in position so that when you open the leg, it's flat to the ground. 
one washer, one wing nut, tighten that sucker down to suck the square part of the carriage bolt into the wood and it's easy peasy, it takes three four, three, four turns, a little bit of muscle, but you got that move. Let's take the other one, pop it into place. As soon as we get a decent place, we're going to put the cross beam between them, and that's what's going to prevent the fly through of the air mills. And it also makes it a little bit easier just to set up the thing because you're not having to deal with independent legs. So we'll take the cross piece, and looks a lot like the cross piece is under the frame, but this just has two here. There's nothing pulling it down, obviously, and then the other side's blank. And this fits right between the legs. You're going to want the screw holes down in here because you're not going to want to see them when you're playing. So. And this, you kind of play a little bit with the flex in the wood here to get it in place like so. Once again, there's grooves in the legs, so you don't need to worry about where you're placing it. It'll put it right where you need it. Through. Probably would have been a, like the, uh, the, the clamp that I put in place earlier would have been a good idea here. So I recommend clamping that and see. I think I think we'll be okay, but it didn't kind of suck it in as tight as it should have with the clamp. Go to this side. screw down here just so I have a bit of a solid deal and then voila. pretty much done got another one two three four half dozen screws to pop in um, got these bad boys which you need to kind of to dial in but other than that you got yourself a cornhole board congratulations it was just that easy so if you have any questions uh, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for ways I can make the video a little bit more clear let me know other than that um, I think we're done here, so thank you very much, and uh, happy cornholing.